is the youngest full partner. <laughs> what? <laughs> Really? You can do that? <laughs> Go home, Romeo. But, but you, you were going to show me, honey. No, you know, I'm just a big tease. <laughs> Remember me? Oh, of course. Who could ever forget you? Well, now you're in my spot. <laughs> Lieutenant Gendy, please? Yeah, this is Riley. Tell Eli I just did his job. Again. Bag the real back alley, Slasher. Yeah, oh, can you hold on a second? Hey, Pops, what's up? <laughs> Mommy did what? I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Please have snow. Luke, darling, aren't you forgetting something? How silly of me. <laughs> oh, I like that. Blood red. Mm, of course, Nora. On you, what other color would I use? Okay, you two. My turn. <laughs> now that makes for a very spooky Christmas in New York. Yes, and there's soon to be a very spooky New Year's. Thanks to you, Reagan, dear. Not that I don't love my new rug. Mother, how long are you going to keep blaming me for you breaking your leg? You are the one who slipped. No, Easter sounds about right. <laughs> oh, you're a lot of help. No, I'm not the one who gave her a widower-making birthday present. <laughs> hey, widower-making? Is that the best you got? Huh? Oh, 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 of course you know. This means war! <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> How's this, honey? Uh, 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 uh. Just a squinch more this way. Tis the season to be jolly. This is as jolly as I get with a toothache. Please make up your mind. La 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 la. Perfect. Do not move. I can promise you that. Oh, this tooth is killing me. When's my dentist appointment again? Oh, it's not till after lunch, honey. Stop your whining, handsome. There's plenty of time to relax and enjoy my beautiful treat. <laughs> oh. It is kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Think it'll snow by Christmas? Let's see what Santa has planned for the Greater New York area, shall we? Oh, sorry, kiddo. Looks like cold and colder for the rest of the week. Well, it's been hot and hotter in L.A., so chilling sounds just fine to me. I'd imagine that it does. Luke, how's that daughter of yours doing? Oh, it's funny you should ask. Let me check the paper to find out. Reagan Riley, private investigator, risks her life to draw out the back alley slasher. 
No, no, it's just another case. And it's not just another case. Mm -hmm. You catch a serial killer, clear your client, make the national news, and hello? Didn't think to mention it to your parents? But hasn't she told us this time? Oh, yeah, here. Read all about her. <laughs> Anything about who she's dating? Oh, no, just the usual murder and mayhem. So, Mom, what's on your schedule for today? Any errands I can run? Anything I can arrange for your radio interview tomorrow? No, thank you, dear. Besides, I thought you were going into the city. There is a great sale at Bloomies. Well, I've got a pretty light day. I'll be happy to pick you up after. <laughs> no, you don't, mister. Huh. Huh. You have a dentist appointment, and you have canceled twice already. Oh. Third time's the charm. Reagan here. Meet your dad here at the dentist at 1 o'clock. Uh, they're delivering our Christmas tree yes, this afternoon. I will be here to greet the big, strong men who carry it in and set it up. <laughs> you think this is funny, do you? I think yeah, I'm going to go grab a shower. <laughs> you, go shower. Kiss. <laughs> you, go work. Oh, yes. <laughs> Love you. Mm. Me, I'm going to treat my leg to a nice nap. <laughs> well, Ray, honey, did you drown in there? The steam makes my tooth feel better. Stop being such a baby. Honey, you know how I feel about wasting good hot water, all right? Five more minutes, and then it's my turn. Hey, when's my birthday again? Willie. And your birthday. I'm not doing this right now. And our anniversary. Come on. And when you put all our numbers in a row on a $40 million winning lottery ticket like one of us was smart enough to do, what do you get? Annoyed. Really? Please don't use up all the hot water. There's an ocean of hot water in here, Elvira. And the answer is what you get is never have to clean another house or fix another faucet rich. Why don't you get in here with me? And maybe you get lucky twice. Let me help you with that, Mr. R. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got it, Rosita. I've got it. <laughs> My family already thinks I'm helpless enough as it is. <laughs> oh, for you and the boys. Oh, thank you. Ah. And for Santa. <laughs> and his helper. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> Christmases have passed since I first opened Garden Gate with the dream of offering those who have lost their loved ones a funeral home like no other. And as we gather here today for our annual Christmas party, it is my pleasure to thank each and every one of you for a, another year of excellence in service and to be reminded once again that no matter how full our work days may be, to take a moment to celebrate. <laughs> All the life has to offer, blah, blah, blah. Charlie. Nice to see you, too. All right, everyone, scurry back to your crummy little jobs with your crummy little gifts. Well, boss man here counts his bag full of money. What? Not giving out any pink slips this year, Santa? You're drunk, Charlie. Yes, I am. And I've gotten pretty good at it, too, thanks to you. OK, stop it, Charlie. I'm just getting started. No, that's enough. Let's go. Look, it's OK, Austin. I'm fine. Actually, <clears throat> we have another problem. So I don't understand why. I hated to interrupt you, but 
I've done everything I can, and he's been utterly inconsolable for the past half an hour, and with all the guests waiting. <laughs> Mr. Dingle? Mr. Dingle, it's Luke Crowley. I had the great honor of knowing your Uncle Cuthbert quite well, and that he donated his fortune to promote childhood literacy was a wonderful thing. So every bell on every street corner that the volunteers of Jingle Book House will proudly ring on Christmas now and forever will honor your Uncle Cuthbert's goodness and generosity. And that can only bring you great peace and comfort. <laughs> so, you're really gonna go through with it this time? The drilling, the needles, the pain. Et tu, Brute? You bet against me in the office pool that I'd chicken out? The odds are too good to pass up. <laughs> I say, and you won't get dead. <laughs> Very funny, Mr. R. Don't shoot Santa, we surrender. <laughs> you think this is a joke? That I won't shoot you? Mr. R? It's okay, Rosita. Stay calm. Yeah, you do that. Both of you. Cell phones, now. Put these on, and toss over your wallet, too. Start the car. Why are you doing this? Please, please let us go. My boys, my babies, they don't have anybody else. Tell somebody who cares. Now shut your trap and do what I say. Listen, why make matters worse? You have the car, take it. Just let us go. You wish. This is a car jacket, right? Enough with the quiz show. You're going to be okay, Rosita. Just do what the man says. Everything's going to be okay. Isn't that right? Whatever. Let's get going. Get on the turnpike, take the Edgewater exit, head under the GW Bridge. Stop the car. Give me the keys. Help Mr. Moneybags out of the back there and grab those goodies. Dear man, be reasonable. Let's go. What have we done to you? We don't even know who you are. Come on. Move it. Uh, what is this about? Let's go. I'm not taking one more step until you tell us what this is about. It's a kidnapping, genius. And if you're good and do what I tell you, you'll find out soon enough what it'll take to buy your freedom. Oh, come on, let's go. Hurry it up. I'm freezing my keister off out here. Come on. Hey, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> Be sure and tell that to Dinah when you kiss her hello tonight. Yeah, as long as I come home to her, that's all the wife needs to know. I mean, you know I'm full of it, but you, you got no excuse. No, what I got is one last semester of night classes at Seton before Before I... you become a big, snazzy lawyer. Yeah, good for you. Where you spending Christmas at? Or New Year's, for that matter. That's right, your mama's. Look, Fred, it's none of my business, but I just think, you know, you deserve somebody nice. <laughs> Donna said, uh... Rosalind, Rosella, who she set you up Rosita. with? Rosita. Her, she really liked you. Yeah, she's great. Smart, funny. I liked her too, but she's got complications. Uh, Laos of an ex-husband, a couple kids. My kids love their uncle Fred. And I love them, but there's a big difference between being an honorary uncle and a full-time daddy. And there's a difference between spending the rest of your life alone and having somebody to buy flowers for. Speaking of which, nothing says Mary Mary. All like... right, all right, e enough already, okay? I'm just saying, 
Yeah, well, stop saying. Hello. Hi. Has Luke Riley arrived yet? Nope, and Dr. Chatterway is waiting. Oh, you're kidding. Why? He's not canceling again, is he? No, not at all. I, I'm sure he is on his way. Uh -huh. Hello, this is Luke's fancy phone, but he still doesn't know how to work. You know the drill. Bye. I'm at the dentist, Dad, and I don't see you. You better be on your way, or Mom's gonna be cooking your goose for Christmas this year. Hurry up. Lock it off! What the hell's your problem? How can you just sit there in front of that heater and not see that she is shivering half to death here? Either turn that heater her way, or you'll never see a dime of rents and money. Is that right, Mr. Big Shot? Well, see it as I got this. Best get used to freezing. The guy was messing with me. What? Sure, sure, I get it. Yeah, yeah, so I'm a pig. Keep yapping it, I'll gag you both again. Okay, okay, I'm going. So, you must be the one in charge. You're Reagan Riley. Pardon? You are Reagan Riley, renowned private detective from Los Angeles, daughter of the best selling crime writer Nora Riley, only child of Luke Riley, funeral home owner, who is currently AWOL and I'm guessing a dentophobe, right? Uh, how do you. Have we met? No, no, no. Big ears, bigger reader. I'm sorry to be so nosy. I'm a huge fan of your mother's and of your good work. I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> that every day I have a celebrity sighting at the dentist's office. Well, so, oh, I'm Elvira Meehan. So I'm gonna let you, Reagan Riley, get back to your thing. Did you say Meehan? Elvira Meehan? Yeah. The Elvira Meehan my mother has been sending me stories about for years, who sometimes writes for the Globe. The amateur sleuth with a tendency to stumble upon crimes in progress and solve them with uncanny ability. The do-gooder, famous for recording everything she hears on her signature starburst spy pin. Longtime cleaning woman from Queens who was on a midtown bus reading my mother's book, It Could Happen to You, when she and her husband, Willie, learned that they had just won millions of dollars in the lottery? No. Never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> so, Megan, wait. Your mother knows who I am. She knows my name, really? Oh, you fascinate her. Do not tease. Scout's honor, she has sent me dozens of articles about your daring deeds. She's a huge fan. I I'm a huge fan of hers. She's not gonna believe that I met you here at the dentist. I don't believe. Oh. <laughs> Where the heck are you? Where the heck do you think I am? Mom. Why so surprised? Is everything okay? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Why wouldn't everything uh, be okay? Uh, excuse me, madam. Do you not see the sign? No, no cell phones in the waiting room. Mother, I... I heard. I just wanted to tell you that I love you. Daddy, too. See you at five. Bye, I love you, too. Ugh, bad accents. Too big, too small, too pushy for my own good? No, it was, it was perfect. Ugh. It was just, where, where the heck is he? Excuse me. <laughs> Garden Gate, Austin speaking. Hey, Austin, it's Reagan. Reagan, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. 
Is my father there by any chance? I, I think he left for the dentist about an hour ago. Wasn't he meeting you? That was the plan. I keep calling his phone and all I'm getting is voicemail. Uh, is, is there anything I can do? Yes, you can, actually. If you could please go to his computer and log on to his account for me. Certainly. I installed that Find My Phone app on their cell phones when they first got them, in case they lost them. This doesn't make any sense. The app says that your father's phone is around here somewhere. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna keep you on the line and, and call my dad's phone, and can you see if you can track his ring? It's in the dumpster. What do you want me to do? Don't touch anything. Don't say anything to anyone. I'm on my way. Yeah, I'd like a text. No, Reagan, we're going to take you. What? We'll take you. Uh, hold on a second, please. Uh, we? We. We who? We me. I don't know who you are or what is going on here, but I do know never to argue with my wife. No, Reagan, listen to me, honey. It's what, it's three days before Christmas, right? If you file some missing persons report, they're not gonna look at it until the kids have opened, broken, and returned their toys. Who can you call who can help? The right guy. You're still here? Thought you'd be halfway to your mom's Christmas ham by now. Oh, you haven't tasted her cooking. Well, give everyone our best, Jack. Oh, especially, uh... uh my maybe. sister doesn't date cops, Dan. Anybody ever tell you you're a regular Scrooge, Riley? Elvira. Hey. I know, I promised Sal, but I can't just take off and leave them. That's her now. I'll call on my way. Here, Mom! Fred! Hey, guys. Is uh, Rosita here? I know I should be used to your persuasiveness, Elvira, but you never cease to amaze me. I mean, here I am way outside my jurisdiction, and you make one phone call? Reagan. Yeah, well, you know, his honor owed me a favor. <laughs> Tell me this. How many people other than the mayor's family have a number for his private line? Well, if you clean a lot of closets over the years, you see a lot of skeletons you shouldn't. That opens doors and gets you calls returned. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to the mayor, Jersey's finest is lucky to have your help. <laughs> Willie. I'm hungry. Come on, just one. OK. So what can you tell us, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Well, CSU is running your father's wallet and cell phone for prints, and the other cell phone came up belonging to Rosita Alvarado. That's Driver? She's missing, too? Yeah. We're going to take a run at Rosita's ex, Ramon. He's got a record, D&D, DUI, and he's a fixture at the craps table in Atlantic City. ACPD are rolling to his last known address now. Is there any chance he could be? At Rosita's? Yeah. We've asked the state police to send a car for a look-see. According to Mr. Grady, she's raising the two kids solo, so most likely they're with the babysitter a Nicole Parma. Does that ring any bells? No, but but I barely know Rosita. Did Austin, um, Mr. Grady, get you the limo's license plate and the Z-Pass numbers I requested? Yeah, and we've got an APB out on the limo and the Z-Pass was picked up crossing the GW into Manhattan. And aren't there cameras on all the bridges and tunnels? Since 9-11, yeah, you bet. So I've got my best man running tape trying to match what the bridge camera picked up to the Z-Pass and maybe we'll get lucky. Great, good. Okay, uh, Grady also clued me into a former employee, Charlie Johnson. Showed up very drunk, very uninvited to the office Christmas party. Oh, Johnson. Right. Dad fired him for using one of the limos as a private car service on the weekends. That's the one. Well, apparently he and Rosie remained friendly after he got the axe, and she ushered him out of there pretty quickly. Hmm. But the most interesting hit that we got was from the funeral home security camera. You guys are going to want to see this. Now, as per Mr. Grady, the Santa's arriving for the Goodloe funeral are volunteers at Jingle Book House coming to pay their respects. Yeah, my folks are big supporters. Yeah, well, the old man left the charity 50 million. Wow. But one of the Santas did not go inside. See here? He gets into the limo before your father and Mrs. Alvarado step outside. After this fan moves, there's no trace of the limo. Can I get a copy of that? Yeah, already done. Hey, poor kid. 
her and her dad are, are due home within the hour. Her mother is laid up with a broken leg. It's three days till Christmas, and now she has to go home and tell her mom that I mean, it just it breaks your heart. Uh, well, if anyone can find a silver lining in this, it's you, Elvira. Okay, here we are. Good. I really appreciate everything you've done. Oh, not at all. I think it's best if I go in alone to break the news to Mom. You sure? No, of course. Of course. Yeah, go. And if you need anything, anything you're going to ask, right? Yeah. Anything. All right. Okay. Well, I feel like... Trying one of those Jersey diners? This is sad. It's the holidays. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's her mother. Here come the waterworks. <laughs> and her father. Honey, honey. She's so sweet. You know what? You take things too personally sometimes. That's all. And, and you're surprised? No, no, I'm not surprised. It's one of the many reasons I love you. Hmm? Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah. that. I think it's... Uh, oh. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't answer it. I won't. Don't answer it. I won't. You can, don't answer it. Hello? Oh, okay. If you want to see your father again, you have 24 hours to get me $5 million. I will call with instructions on where to make the drop tomorrow. Call the cops, and he's dead. <laughs> dead! Home, I'm gonna tell her you should be our sitter from now on. Yeah, all our sitter ever does is yak on the phone and tell us to shush. Hey, would you guys like to do me a favor? Why don't you go grab that uh, checker game you were telling me about and go and set it up in the kitchen, huh? I'll get it! No, me! Uh, tell me, Rosita's okay. I got bad news. Call the cops, and he's dead. See? In the background, it was like a, like a whooshing sound. I played just that last part of it. <laughs> See, it, it's most pronounced just, just as... Just as the it's... call ends. Yeah. Lieutenant Saito just said the same thing. He's going to take the file you uploaded and run it through a spectrum analyzer to see if we can get an ID on it. Whoever this reprobate is, he certainly has a miserable cold. <laughs> How did your call go? Other than my broker being a bit too curious. Any red flags? No. Five million in stocks will be converted to cash and in my money market tomorrow morning. I'll have my team coordinate the transfer through the Federal Reserve. That way, all the ransom money is logged and tagged. That's fine, Detective, but let's be crystal clear. The money is replaceable. Luke and Rosita are not. That is so Nora Riley. Just the poise under fire, the clarity, the passion. It's like one of the characters in your books. Come and get it, folks. Sharp minds need nourishment to keep from going off the rails. There's so little, Mr. Riley. 
I'm with their grandma back in Puerto Rico. I have to use a sitter. Rosita, I'm sure that my family is already taking care of Chris and Bobby. The ransom will be paid. I promise you'll be home soon. But how can you know? How can you be sure that because these men will... Because all they want is money. What if they... They won't. They'll take the money and we can't identify them. It'll be okay. Prints on both cell phones produce no hits, and the photo taken on the GW captured the suspect in his Santa disguise. Do you recognize this man? This could be the same low life from the surveillance footage. That is, if I could see him, print quality blows, Lieutenant. It's a fax of a fax of a photo. I'm working on getting the original. I'll work faster. Any luck with my recording? Yeah, and then some. Take a listen. I will call with instructions on where to begin the that's the sound of jet engines. Based on where the photo was taken, I'm guessing JFK or LaGuardia. I can't do this radio interview tomorrow. Oh, of course. You're right, Mom. I'm not so sure she is right, Reagan. What do you mean? Well, honey, I know you're just trying to protect your mom, but, but hear me out. All right, you've had this interview. It's been promoted for like three weeks now, right? To coincide with the publication of your new book. One that your fans know you do every single year to promote Jingle Book House. If you cancel, we don't know how the kidnappers will react. I mean, they may think it's a sign of police involvement. I don't know. She's right, Mom. Mm hmm And you made that exact point in Rock by Me Deadly. I did. I did. Precisely that, Elvira. Oh, I can't focus. I just... Hey, what about Charlie Johnson, the, the guy who crashed the office party? After talking to his neighbors, I learned Charlie's been on a serious bender for most of the last year. We're staking out his favorite haunts. What about surveillance footage from the Garden Gate parking lot? Any leads there? I forwarded it to the FBI. Maybe we'll get lucky. I think we just did. Rosita's ex Ramon? Atlantic City Police haven't found him yet. He hasn't been at his last known address in months. But they've confirmed that he's in deep to a mobbed up loan shark to the tune of 200 grand. They put a hit out on him? That would explain him going underground. And there is your motive, right? If they do find Ramon, they'll put him under surveillance. Hopefully, he'll lead us right to Luke and Rosita. Which brings up the really ugly question. If Ramon is the kidnapper, could Rosita possibly be an inside accomplice? That's impossible. Mom, we have to examine every angle. You don't know her. I do. She is not involved, not Rosita. She's a good mother. Maybe, but you haven't seen what I've seen. I actually lived it. Look, I know you research every crime, every criminal. You write with knowledge and passion, but no one really lives or dies in your world, Mom. I mean, you'd be shocked at the number of good people that I've had to put away for doing very bad things. And right now, the only thing linking Charlie and Ramon to any of this is Rosita. Well, I still think you're wrong. I hope you're right, but we have to know. Which leaves us with Rosita's children. Somebody has to interview those kids. Okay, okay, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, I had stops to make. <sighs> you sure got off easy today. The traffic was so bad when I ditched the limo that I'd still be stuck in it if I wasn't in the Z Pass late. <sighs> what? Is he pass? <laughs> Dummy may have just done us a big favor. Oh, I hope so. No way that will happen. Besides, I wiped it down with bleach. Exactly as you wrote it down. I left the phone like I was supposed to.
Eggs? Uh, cheese, tuna salad. Mm -mm. Come on, something's gotta sound good. Mommy! Oh. Boys, let me, let me get that. Who wants pizza? Pizza! So you boys are used to your mommy working late for my dad? Uh-huh, because then mommy brings home cookies and even presents. Presents? Like the kinds of presents that Santa brings? No, mom calls them swaggy. Oh yeah, that's, that's not what Santa brings. So what do you want this year from Santa? We want a treat. Yeah, Uncle Fred said he'd take us. He's not really our uncle, but he's cool. He knows Santa too. I bet he does. And what else are you gonna ask for for Christmas? Hmm. Come on, there's gotta be something else that you want. How about... A truck! Yeah, our dad drives a truck. He does. But he doesn't live with us anymore. He had to move for work. Mommy says we can ask Santa for a truck, but not for Daddy. We're now allowed to ask for people. Oh, you miss him, huh? Uh-huh. I'm gonna ask Santa if he can help Daddy come home anyhow. I won't tell Mommy. I, I know procedure mandates that I call social services, but... With their mom missing and their sad excuse of a father in the wind, I, I just couldn't do it to them. And the sitter wasn't the least bit concerned about just leaving. She offered to stay, but uh, when she learned I was a cop and since the boys knew who I was, she took off. Look, I, I, I know it sounds crazy, mm -hmm. but I just kept thinking, hoping that Rosita was just delayed. You know, that, that she'd come walking through that door any minute and find me, of all people. Ben, believe me, it's gonna be fine, all right? Your captain asked me to tell you you have his full support, okay? It's settled then. I can stay here with Chris and Bobby until we see this back safe and sound. Oh, yeah. In fact, you being here has become key to our investigation. How's that? What do you know about Rosita's ex-husband, Ramon? Please tell me he's not the perp. Ramon and Rosita from Fred, right? Pregnant, married, straight out of high school, and apparently straight downhill from there. Does Fred think Rosita could be dirty? <laughs> what do you think? Ramon left in the middle of the night, right? Never sent them a dime. How about that? Oh, I think I owe my mother an apology. Yeah, we both do. Honey, I can smell the onions from here. I like onions. I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. No, not at all. Thanks for coming. I just wanted to get my dad's laptop. Mm. Cuthbert Boniface Goodlow? Oh, is this the funeral that attracted all the Jingle Book House mourners? Yes. He was a kind and generous man. Were there any actual family members among all those volunteer Santas? Uh, nephew, Cuthbert Boniface Dingle. He took the loss quite hard. First chance we get, we should pay our condolences to Mr. Dingle. After the police were through, I, I didn't know what to do. I, well, I, I didn't know what was allowed. And who would like a nice cup of tea? I'll take you up on that. Thank you, Austin. Oh, it's Jack. You go on ahead. I'll catch up. Hey, Jack. Good news, Elvira. What? Saito got a clean photo off the GW. Oh, well, that's great. Should be in your email now. Yes, please thank Lieutenant Saito for me.
Upon examination of the actual footage captured by the security cameras on the George Washington Bridge, I now see that unlike all the others dressed as Santa who attended the funeral, the suspect is not wearing a Jingle Book House volunteer insignia pin, which leads me to conclude he was not an invited guest, but an imposter. Who knew if he showed up in that disguise, he would blend in? meaning he had prior knowledge of the large contingent of Jingle Book House Santas expected to attend, leaving the kidnapper confident that at this funeral, on this day, in this disguise, was his very best chance to stage the perfect crime. You boys are hungry. I made my special chocolate chip pancakes. Yes! Is mommy home yet? She already left for work. We missed her. But since she had to leave really early, I promised her right after breakfast, Christmas tree time. Huh? Yeah. yeah! Yes! Charlie Johnson, how you doing? I don't know any Charlie. Oh, sure you do. Come on, we met through Luke Riley. What's your relationship with Rosita Alvarado? We got no relationship. Rosita's the only one that didn't treat me like crap after I got the boot. She's a nice lady, that's all. Come on, I got things to do. You got nothing to hold me on. We got you resisting arrest. Why don't we start with that, see where it takes us? I'm supposed to believe the head of major crimes is out rustling rummies for unpaid parking tickets? Even I'm not that stupid. Salt, auto theft, larceny. I don't see a lot of unpaid parking tickets here. I'm thinking that maybe this week, you decide to make the jump to the bigs. One black, two cream, one sugar. How'd it go with your suspect? Well, we got him on that bodega robbery in Brooklyn we were trying to clear last Saturday, but Charlie is definitely not our kidnapper. Well, we did get some good news. Seems your volunteer detective came through again. Elvira? Yeah. I don't think she ever sleeps. <laughs> she emailed me an audio file way past midnight on the same Santa photo Ms. Riley busted my ass over. She was spot on the money that our perp was the only Santa present not wearing a Jingle Book house pin. Which, it turns out, you can't buy through making a donation only by uh, putting your butt out in the cold and working those corners. Elvira also said something about the suspect having details of the funeral he could use to his advantage. An angle she's running down this morning in the hope that a guest noticed or might even know the phony Santa and could help ID him. Okay, running down how? She and Ms. Riley are paying a visit to uh, Mr. Dingle, nephew of the deceased. <clears throat> Is Saito? He's speaking to Reagan Riley. Yeah, so. don't even go there. She packs a uh, Glock 26, Jack. She's amazing. At her job. Okay, so why don't you go wash your mind out with some soap? Limo turned up abandoned near LaGuardia. CSU's en route.
Willie, how many times have I asked you to get directions, honey? We could have saved so much time. I mean, how in the world did you ever manage uh, to run your own plumbing company sweetie. with your lack of organization? It's just beyond me. Take as long as you'd like, sweetheart. Honey, we should have done this years ago. Hey, Jack. Just wanted to let you know we got the limo. We're going through it now. They have the limo. Is uh, Miss Reagan Riley available? Is Miss Reagan Riley available? Yes, she is. Hello, Detective Jack Riley. This is Reagan Riley. That's a whole lot of. Riley's? I was thinking the same thing. Maybe we should just stick to Jack. And Reagan. Just Reagan. Reagan, got it. Look, I know this is probably old hat to you, but I just wanted to go through the drill for when the kidnappers call. The home phone is set to ring through to my cell phone, which you're tapping and tracking in real time. Right. And when the call comes in, I want to keep them on the line as long as possible. Demand two? Speak with the hostages. Do you have any other questions for me, Reagan? No. Just a big thank you. My mother and I, we will never forget this. Just doing my job. Oh, no. I, I've known a lot of cops. I've worked with some and against some, and... This is more than a job to you. We'll be in touch. Look forward to it. Yeah, he's as good as you said. Bingo! Hello? Hello. Cuthbert? Name's CB. Oh. Come on in. I'm just finishing up a few things here. OK, yeah, the, the door was open. Hi, CB. I'm Reagan Riley. Reagan? My dad is Luke Riley, Garden Gate Funeral Home. Mr. Riley, of course. Your father is a very gracious man. Uh, and you are? Oh, I'm um, Elvira. My aunt, Aunt Elvira. Aunt Elvira. Yeah. Did we come at a bad time? No. No, I just packing to move. For the last year of my uncle's life, I had the privilege of taking care of him. So now that he's gone? I can move on knowing he's at peace. But uh, I still understand why you're here. Was there a problem? Because the funeral was beautiful. Oh, no, 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 no. What um, my niece was trying to say is that a family heirloom is missing from the funeral home, one that Luke, my brother, was going to give his wife for Christmas. It was on my dad's desk, and he remembers seeing one of the volunteers. Santas. Coming out of the office, he claimed that he was lost. I'm sure you can imagine how upsetting this mm -hmm. is for our family. I'm sorry. I wish I could help. I. I didn't know any of them. The only thing they had in common was the, the Jingle Book house. So I guess you wouldn't have noticed if anyone didn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, you see one Santa, you see them all. But uh, I'll ask around, and if, if I come up with anything, tell your father I'll be sure and call. Great, oh, great, thanks. thanks. Oh, since you offered, uh, maybe we could get your phone number, just have it handy in case we need to contact you. Thank you so much. What if you... Don't mind, I really should get back to this. But give your father my best. Oh, thank you. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. On the big WVXT Christmas countdown, we are going to take a break from all of this holiday cheer mumbo jumbo. And we are going to make this a very spooky Christmas. Oh! <laughs> That's right, boys and ghouls. Today, we are hanging with our favorite thrillmeister, Nora Riley, whose latest novel is so scary that, well, you'll never look at tinsel the same way again. Huh? Morgan, you really know how to flatter a girl. Anything for you, Nora. Hey, let's get this plug out of the way, shall we? Nora Riley's very latest book, A Very Spooky Christmas, blends thrills, chills, and suspense with heart. Humor and holiday cheer in a page turner perfect for your Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's right, Morgan. But let's not forget that a portion of the proceeds of each book goes to Jingle Book House, a charity that is near and dear to my heart that supports childhood literacy. Ah, that's right. And your legions of Santas have been, well, everywhere ringing those damn bells for weeks now. <laughs> of course, it's all to help raise money so the kiddies can learn to read. Well. The bell ringers will soon cease for this year, Morgan. But the important cause of childhood literacy is year-round, and I think with New Year's just around the corner, that parents should make a resolution to read to their children every day. Now, you have a, a daughter, Norma. And did you and your husband read to her as a child? 
Absolutely. Well, it was one of the joys of my husband. My husband, my uh, dear, uh, kind Luke. One of the joys of his life to read to our daughter. I mean, it's the greatest gift that one can give to a child or to oneself. Speaking of that daughter of yours, Nora, the famous Reagan Riley, she has been getting some pretty interesting press these days. <laughs> yes. Yes, she has. And not just because she is smoking hot. No, no. She's a real-life private eye, just like out of one of your novels, isn't she? Yes, she is. Yes. And she's single, too. Well, then, Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nora Riley, for joining us. And you have a happy, happy holiday with your family, will you? And give a special shout-out to that book-reading husband of yours. And listeners, you dig deep and give to Jingle Book House. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. Happy holidays to you two. Well done. And now if you just excuse me. Misery. Morgan in the afternoon on WVXT. We'll be right back. There you are. So, do you always record everything? Kind of my thing. It's what I do. Well, made her promise not to record me. Other than that... Shush. Don't mind him. Reagan Riley. You and you alone are to bring five million in unmarked hundreds in a red Ironside hard shell roller to Christopher Park at four o'clock and dress for a night on the town, pretty like. I'll be watching. Unless you bring my father and Rosita, there'll be no money. No swapping. You pay or they die. Let me speak to my father now. Dad, are you okay? Your mother was amazing on the radio. I could uh, just see myself reading you your favorite book. When you okay, were done. Not, not unless I speak to Rosita. No, Rosita. Where are my babies? How are my babies? They're safe, Rosita. Nora. Oh, what happened? You boys sure picked the beauty of a tree for your mom. <laughs> well, that's some big job you're doing there. You boys okay? Don't worry, Mrs. Lee. We got it. Oh, we do. Sure, we're strong. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Lee? I, uh... I need you to take the boys inside the apartment. How would you boys like some fresh baked Christmas cookies? Cookies! Can we, Uncle Fred? Yeah, you bet. And as soon get your tree inside the apartment, I'll come join you. Okay, Mrs. Lee? I understand. Vince. Yeah, it's going down now. I need backup. 581 Maple. No way this is our guy. Unfortunately, you're right. 
I thought for sure it was him when we pulled the ace of spades out of the limo. But there's no hits on Ramon's prints, right? No, got clean reads too. Now, either this kidnapper is the best of the best, or the rookie's rookie. But the prints we pulled off the playing card are not in the FBI database. Ramon's not our guy. So then, where are we with this ransom call? We're running the specs now. Yeah, you know, I have played back this recording dozens of times, and even with his cold, the way he's talking, it's like he's reading to us, right? You know, it struck me that way as well. I mean, whoever our suspect is, it, it seems to me they got somebody behind them calling the shots, using them as a mouthpiece, which means whoever this guy or gal is, they can't run the risk of us hearing what they sound like. So, you mean it's someone Reagan's family your dad might have met before? Well, yeah, that'd fit the pattern. But what does this have to do with my dad reading to me as a kid? The only thing I can think of is that this person is involved somehow, some way, with Jingle Book House. Right. Which reminds me, what about the nephew of the deceased, the Mr. Dingle? Does he have anything to do with Jingle Book House? No, he lost his uncle. He's moving on with his life. That charity really meant nothing to him. Hmm. Leave him be. Hmm? It's uh, gonna be a long day. Besides, you and Willie are off duty for the next round anyway. Well, the instructions were for me to come alone. Well, I know, but I'm your backup. No means no, Elvira. Look, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. All right, Reagan. I think it's best this way. Mm -hmm. And Jack, I know you're tracking that money, but I don't want to see you or your men anywhere near that drop point. That's fine. But we're going to be two steps behind you. It's time. Reagan? When I was little, I couldn't sleep. My pop used to hold my hand and tell me stories about his dad, whom I never had the chance to know because my grandfather died before I was born. I don't want my kids, if I ever have kids, not to know the grandpa. I wish I could convince you that you didn't have to do this, but. Who would you be kidding? You're gonna do great. So have you figured out what car I'll be driving? Oh, I thought I'd leave that up to you. The uh, NYPD impound garage is the best used car lot in the tri-state area. Make the calls, but I wait here for the drop. They don't scare me, Mr. R. My boys are okay. That's all that matters. So I know whatever happens, my children will be in a good place, and they'll burn, burn forever. Oh, they'll pay all right, Rosita, but they are never going to hurt us because the last thing anyone in their right mind would ever want is my daughter pissed off and coming after them. Help you back there, Elvira. How'd you know? I knew you'd know which car I'd pick. And you gave up way too easy on coming along. So we're OK then, yeah? As long as you stay out of sight okay. and don't offer any driving tips, yeah. Change of plans. Go to patio 630, 125th, 20 minutes, and ditch your phone. Remember, I see you. Here, take care of the money. You lost? Are you a tourist? Excuse me? What'll it be? I'm not sure. That's enough of that now. Huh. Go see to the stew. Go on now. And how are you on this fine day? 
I'm... Don't let my sister's mood spoil your own. She's been getting up on the wrong side of the bed since the day we were born. I'm a minute older and it sticks in her craw. I take it you two are... Oh, we get along all right, but you know what we say about the Irish. We forget everything but the grudge. You're both pretty and smart. I'll be right with you. Patios. Oh, yes, indeed, Santa, right where you left it. Why, yes, I believe she is. Of course, it'd be my pleasure. Seems this is for you. Hello? Go to you gifted down the block. To the what? You gifted. Just shut it and do what I say. All right, I need you to wrap this suitcase like a present. So you want me to gift wrap the suitcase, yeah? Yeah, I've got 15 minutes to get to Pier 61. I need you to do it quickly. And how big would you like the boat? Where to next? The Jingle Book House Christmas party on the mezzanine level. When? Two minutes. Okay. Listen, no time. All right. Oh, All right. Keep your phone on. Hi. Right. Yeah, in case I need you. Yes. And uh, park car. Okay. Oh, but but I don't drive. Where should I stick your present? Give it to Santa, pretty lady. Thank you for your support, ma'am. Hey, what you guys doing up here? How we doing? Thank you for supporting Jingle House. Oh, every time. But I have to say, you clean up real nice. Where are my father and Rosita? I'll call to tell you after I'm gone. If anyone follows me, especially you, they die. Let's head over well, here. I got some little break back in the back. Oh, hello there. Hey, wow. thanks on behalf of me and on behalf of Jenkins. This was oh, a little light. Hi. Put this one over there on the top. Happy holidays. Jingle the house. Thank you. Hey, you can bring that box right over here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm on my way back. Where did you park? Right where you left me. I don't drive. Oh, and they keep honking at me. Calm down, Elvira. I'm on my way.
You okay? What do you think? Elvira. I just never know when to leave well enough alone. I don't. You know what? I'm just gonna get out of your hair. Because of me, he dropped the money, and now they can't track it to your dad. I hate to rain on your pity party, but this isn't your fault. Oh, please. I'm the one he spotted, and he panicked and started running, and I chased after him like a complete amateur. Oh, do not go blaming yourself. Which is exactly my point. <sighs> Playing the blame game isn't going to help anybody at this point. Especially my dad and Rosita. I don't know how to fix this, but I do know that in order to succeed, I'm going to need that smart, ballsy, sticker nose in everybody's business, Elvira Meehan, that I've come to count on right by my side. Settled then. I get your booty back in the car and let's go fix this. know a threat when I see one. That photo is from the book signing for Haunted Haunts, and that was almost two years ago. Mom, your fans have a history of coming to your events in costume just to have their picture taken with you. This could simply be a gift from a zealous fan. Then why no return address? And why now? I mean, tell me how I'm wrong. No, no one's saying you're wrong. We just don't want you to jump to conclusions. Nora, I mean... listen, they'll catch this guy. It'll be OK. All right, so they fished a suitcase out of the river. All the money is present and accounted for. Still no sign of our Santa? We got a print. We got him. Don't move! Get your hands up! Don't move! Clear. Where are they? Where are you holding Luke and Rosita? Smoke stinks! Nora loves Alvin! Nora loves Alvin! Quiet, Nora! Maybe it needs more. What do you think, Nora? Nora? Oh, boy. Look, I love doing other people's trees. Who wouldn't? But Elvira is going to hold me personally responsible if my handiwork is not up to her high tinseling standards. And if I don't place this star up there just so, she's going to place it somewhere else just so. And <laughs> she's done it before. I promise she won't be pretty. All right. We wouldn't want that. What's the next move? Now you're talking. Well, first of all, I think we need a real ladder and a tape measure, maybe even a bottle. I mean, a level. Did I say bottle? I meant level. Excellent idea on both counts. Full speed ahead. Oh. There's been no news on the radio, no call from him all night saying he's in trouble or something went wrong. But it's not our fault if your buddy double-crossed you. He's playing you. He's got the money. <laughs> now, why not let us go so you can go take back what's yours? Shut up! We're just trying to help. Where's my money? I lost the buddy. But at least I got away. You. Moron! You imbecile! You mother! I should be what? Grateful that you didn't get caught? Peter, you're a dead man. But CB, we've been best buds forever. Forever and a day too long. Cuthbert! Wait! Don't call me that! That's my good for nothing uncle's name. And it's your fault that you're here. You and my uncle in that godforsaken jingle book house that you both loved so much. 
that he loved more than me, even after years of, yes, uncle, what can I do for you, uncle? Be sure and give him my worst. Or you could stop acting like a spoiled child and let me get back your $5 million. Why don't you stop lying to us, Alvin? But she did let me take those pictures. I, I swear on Nora's life. You need to stop saying that. Can I shoot him? Okay. Alvin, what Reagan's trying to say is that Nora, not your bird, Nora, but the real Nora, asked us to come ask you if you know where Luke and Rosita are. Luke's ugly. That is it. I'm, I'm going to kill that damn bird. <laughs> Reagan Riley. I assume they recovered the money. Hey, hey. Yes, Dad, but we're, where this, is this? Uh, screw up is uh, making me see red. Do what they're going to tell you to do. It's our only chance. Surrender, Luke. Surrender. Get him cuffed. The bird out. <laughs> this plan here is better work. Why would I lie to you? Our lives are in your hands. Count on it. Be good for me, Pity. Or else. Go ahead, Dad. We're ready. Put the body into another bag, exactly like the last suitcase. Head for the Queen's Midtown Tunnel and exit on Borden Avenue, where you will find a pile of abandoned furniture dumped right under Long Island, Long Island, Island Expressway. Expressway. I know I have it here somewhere. Strange Detective Magazine, issue number 12. No, possibly 13. You're sure this story has a drop under the Long Island Expressway? Yes, and at 30th Street, not 30th Place. And so cunning of your father to use your mother's ingenious knack for plot twists against his captors. Do you remember this story, Elvira? No, I've read every one of your mother's books. It was never in a book, not even a compilation. No, when this piece was first published, your mother was duly buried or pregnant with you. Ah! Oh, how about that? It's issue number 12 after all. Yeah, he's no kidnapper. Uh, Where are we in the money, Jack? It's on its way. I'm going to confirm with the rest of my team that everything's good to go at the new drop point. Long Island Express. What that sound? What is it? Why can't I remember? Come on, Elvira. It's like I've heard it a million times. All right, you know what? What do, what do we know? What was your dad saying? He was trying to tell you something about books, right? Books books that he read to you when you were a child. Right. And he said that he was mad. He said red. Let me he see said, that. I'm seeing red. He crossed out his name. Yeah? CB. He crossed out his uncle's name on the memorial program to write down his phone number. Who does that? Not to someone you love, right? Or someone you claim to love. Yeah. Of course. CB got cut out of his rich uncle's will. I mean, he, he wasn't moving on with his life. He was being kicked out on his ear. Oh, my. This is not good. This is not good at all. What's not good? I just finished rereading the story. What I forgot was the cops caught the kidnappers. But the poor, unfortunate hostages croaked. Oh, come on, Elvira. Please, you've got to remember. There's got to be something that rings a bell. Bill! Oh, that's what it is, bells! It's the bells of St. Michael's. I heard it for 20 years every Friday on the hour coming from St. Michael's Church. It was right across from where I clean houses. It's bells. Where is the church? It's in Edgewater. Come on. Wait. I'm coming. Seeing red. Go away for me. That's it. I know where they are. Jack, we've got to go save him before it's too late. Stick to my mom's story. See, these are kidnapper. He should be there. Trust me. Let's go. After all the time and effort I put into keeping my identity secret so I wouldn't have to eliminate you, I even fooled the famous Reagan Riley and her nosy aunt Alvira, only to have my brilliantly executed deception ruined by Petey, who I just knew would screw up and force me to trigger plan B. <laughs> you get it? Trigger? It's really too bad my uncle wasn't here to see my masterwork. Do you know what his last words were? Do you? Why would you? After selling my loft 
in my Brazilian Blackwood pool table, cutting me off, clearing my accounts. He sold my Porsche, left me with my mother's old beater. He told me, get a job. Like I was common. But now, thanks to you, everything's gonna be all right. It's such a shame you were fool enough to place your life in my hands. Merry Christmas! <laughs> The little red lighthouse in the Great Great Bridge. My dad read that to me, I don't know how many times. I drove him crazy about driving me down to the Hudson to see it. I don't know that book. Well, published in 1942, it's a timeless classic penned by Hildegard H. Swift and illustrated by Lynn Ward. About a little red lighthouse, happy and content until a great bridge is built mm -hmm. over it. And it must learn that, small as it may be, it still has an important job to do in this world. Really? Anything else? And what else would you like to know? Who are you? Me, uh, Alvin Luck, only child of Lou and Lois Luck, Erie PA. Middle class upbringing, avid reader, webmaster of Dora Riley fanboy. You know, I got it, I got it, honey. So, well, nice to meet you, Alvin. Oh, no, it's my greatest pleasure. Being with you two is the most exciting moment of my entire existence. And not including my actual birth experience, naturally. Naturally. Come on, Reagan. Come on, baby. Is it horrible? No. The dentist would have been much worse.
top-rate job on the tree, Willie. Great tinsel work. You hear that, Elvira? Oh, my darling, there are no words. <laughs> Elvira, I'm about to begin work on my new book, and I could use a research assistant. Really? Hmm, I wonder who'd be qualified. <laughs> I'd love to. And, Mommy, Uncle Fred taught us how to pick out the most awesomest Christmas tree ever. Didn't he, Bobby? Well, in that case, it's only right for Fred to help us decorate that tree. I like that very much. Room for one more, Riley? What a surprise. On the drive up, I kept trying to come up with an excuse to be here, and all I got was, uh, I'm in the neighborhood. Well, since you're here. <laughs> Look, everybody! It's snowing! Can't help myself. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. From the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa 